body. Do you feel it anything more than a four out of 10 during the movement? Just rest, break it, don't push, don't overdo it, okay? Understand and know the difference between that good pain and that bad pain. With that being said, let's get ready to begin. Small balls is what we're going to be using. You can always use a little cushion, toilet roll, whatever, even as a, a, any sort of thing around that kind of vibe. You guys get what I'm saying. Okay, so let's begin. Standing with your feet parallel, fist distance apart. I'll adjust the screen as I drop down to the mat, okay? So just for this section. I want you to open up your toes. Get a sense of your center in space. You can close your eyes and just feel how it feels to be in your body right now. I want you to just loosen those knees and open up your toes as you spread and anchor them into the ground. Make a connection with each tip of the toe. Feel that you're pressing weight into your heels and into the toes, that you're equally spreading. Sometimes you're shifting forward or hanging back without realizing. In that position, I want you to draw up into your pelvic floor and just gently lengthen your tailbone down. So you're creating that length in the low spine and just a gentle activation of the muscles below your navel. In this position, we're gonna inhale, lift up nice and tall, keeping the shoulders drawn down as you pass your ball or roll over your head and then exhale. Stabilizing your shoulders, you don't want to be doing this. Okay, inhale, reach up, same space between shoulders and ears, exhale, release. And again, breathing in, stretching till your crown is lifting to the ceiling, exhale. Expanding the ribcage wide and full, laterally, exhale, let your reverse direction. Lifting up, shoulders down, exhale, pass. Breathing in, through the nose, exhale out the mouth. And again, inhale. Exhale. Two more. Thinking of your spine being pulled up to the ceiling like a puppet on a string. Nice gaps between each vertebra, breathing in and release it down. We're going to roll the shoulders as we stretch the knees and bend. Feel that you can keep your feet flat, grounded onto the mat as you bend through your knees, creating some mobility through the ankles, through the feet, and getting a little bit of a stretch through that Achilles. Bend, roll back. Good. One more, and let's reverse it up and over. Really waking up all those muscles, supporting and surrounding shoulder girdle. Two more, deep breaths. One more, and this time we're not the chin gently looking towards the floor. The arms are hanging like a rag doll. The knees have a slight little bend, and we're leaving the hips behind now as we drop the crown to the ceiling slowly. Unpacking that spine, one vertebra at a time. Holding the micro knee bend, release head, neck, shoulders. Hanging there, take a deep breath in to the ribs. Tucking your navel and roll up slowly, really scooping your belly as you lengthen your tailbone down and then restack your spine up tall. And again, breathe in. Roll your shoulders back, soft knees, down, and roll it down. Microphone's muted there, please, guys. I can hear somebody. Hanging heavy into it, take a deep breath, tuck in your belly, and roll yourself back up, restack the spine. We go for two more. This is just really getting that full length through the spine, stretching those muscles along each vertebra. Hang the head heavy, leaving the hips behind, drop into it. 
Inhale, break forward, pelvic floor. Lengthen the tailbone down to the heels. And lift up the spine, space. One more, breathe in, roll your shoulders back and on your chin. Roll down, nice and heavy. See if you can drop a bit lower, getting your ribs to your thighs. Still maintaining equally pressed weight through your feet. Disconnect the neck. Empty out the exhales here, and then one large inhale. Draw in your navel and use your exhale to roll back up. Lengthening tailbone down. Lift up your chest. Good. Ball or toilet roll behind you. Stretch your elbows. Lift the ball from the tailbone. Open up the chest. Rolling your shoulders back. Breathe. Soft knees. Keep lifting in your chest. Five, four, three, two, one. And gently release it. Good, 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 good. From there, I want you to place the ball or roll in between your knees. So staying parallel, tuck in the navel, be lengthen the tailbone down, okay? Nice support for lower back. And we're going to sit back, hinging at the hips on that imaginary chair, keeping a flat back. You don't want to go there, okay? We want to work through the hips and through the back. And then power it up, squeeze those glutes. We go, inhale, exhale. Notice where the weight's going through your feet. Can you keep it equally pressed? Exhale. Doesn't matter how far you sit back, do your best. Power it up. Inhale. Low neck tension. We've got a nice long line as we sit back. Now we're starting to just squeeze that ball a little bit more. Getting a bit more inner thigh action. Power it up. We'll go for three more. Inhale. Squeezing ball. Exhale. And lift it up. Two more. Exhale. One more. Hold it here. Squeeze into that ball. Ten little tiny pulses. Squeezing tight at ten, nine, eight, seven. Try and pop your ball. Five, four, three, two. Hold that squeeze on number one and power it up. Release. Easy peasy, guys. And you're warming up. <laughs> Find your balance now. Doesn't matter how high you lift your heels, but just hover. Open those toes. Press into the big toe, the little toes, and float your heels off of the mat. Just a floating heel. Don't go up and lock the heels. Stay bending light in the joints because that's getting much more muscle activation. We want strong muscles to support our bony structure, not the other way around. So hovering your heels, let's see. Can we sit back with hovering heels? Maybe not so far back, that's fine. But balance as you hinge back in your hips and extend them forward again. Exhale. Are you rolling onto your pinky toes or can you keep the big toe anchored into the mat? Can you maintain soft shoulders and leg through your neck vertebra? Go at your own pace. Even if you do a few less reps, that's fine. We're going to do two more. Yes. Oh, yeah. One more and hold it there. So, keep on going, guys. Hold it there. Hovering your heels. Squeeze your ball. And we're going to pulse those hips. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, power it up, lower your heels down, take that ball, shake it out. Good, 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 good. Find your balance. Lifting one leg up, either wrapping your tail around the foot or grabbing the toes. 
Draw the knee back so you can align both thighs. You don't want the leg there or back there. Align your thighs as one leg. And then tuck in the pelvis and think of stretching out that knee towards the floor, growing a longer leg. From there, lifting the opposite arm up with a ball. Find your balance. Notice if you're hanging forward, can you pull your weight back? Hold it. Stay steady. Good. And then release it. Let's go to the other side. Hooking foot to toe or grabbing it. Align your knees, tuck your pelvis. Find the stretch as you draw your heel to your glute. Maybe a slight little bend in your standing leg, and depending on how that knee feels. Don't jam lock into the joint. Just soften, but still draw up with strength. Good. Lifting the opposite arm up, find your balance. Grow a little bit taller. Lift your chest, stretch. For three, two, one, and release it. Good, well done guys. All righty, let me adjust the screen. Let's take it down to the mat now. So, laying on your spine, we're gonna go into some pelvic curls. Now, when we're doing abdominals, we want that cushion all right, if we're starting out, if we're strengthening the core, if we've got neck pain issues, the neck load takes over the abdominals. Good, great to have that cushion. It makes a lot of difference to the abdominal load. But with the pelvic curls, it's a different exercise, it'd be a different area of focus. So we don't want the pillow part pelvic curl. Remember that and remove any elevation in the neck because as we roll the hips up, it becomes a loaded position on your neck. You don't want to be in a pillow and then lifting up like that. So just flatten out the gaps and just go with the flow. Come now. Ball or roll in between your knees. Feet fist distance apart, hands reaching nice and long at the side. You don't want your feet too far away. You don't want your heels on top of your glutes. You want to imagine you've got about your foot size space between your heels and your glutes here. Yeah. Align your feet, make sure one's not in front of the other. Your alignment is so important. It doesn't help to do an exercise and completely out of position. So you want your knees in line with your hips. You want your ankles in line with your knees. You want your feet parallel. You want to be centered with your weight on your spine. You want to reach both arms equally down at your side. Your triceps are active and you're opening up your collarbones. Now, take a deep breath in through your nose. Flatten any kinks through your wrist and squeeze your ball as you tuck in your navel, hollowing out your belly. So think of pulling in your belly to touch the front of your spine as you gently lift your pubic bone higher than your two hip bones and then anchor your tailbone back down into a neutral pelvis. Again, tucking in your navel, you tilt and scoop to lift pubic bone higher than your two hip bones. Hollow out your belly. Soften, pull in your six pack. We're going into much deeper layers. Think of holding in your urine, okay? It's everything below the navel. And then anchor it down. Again, squeeze the ball gently, tuck in, tilt, hollow out the belly and anchor it back down. Now notice here, this is real beginner basic, step one reminder for any of these movements. Use the pelvic floor to do the tilt. Don't go into hamstrings and boots just yet. See if you can just use your pelvic floor connection, drawing in to lift your pubic bone to anchor your tailbone. What you're doing here is creating mobility in your lower spine. The slower spine can be, become tight, rigid, and sometimes locked. And I want you to be able to switch off your hamstrings, switch off your glutes, and just find a pelvic floor activation in the pelvis. Notice when you exhale, it's easier to draw in the muscles. 
So your breathing with your movement also creates a lovely flow. Just try and stand what you're doing and then incorporate your breath. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Hold that tilt. Continue lifting pubic bone. This time now we start using the glutes and the hamstrings to lift the hips up. But still keeping pubic bone higher than the hip bones. Just one quick second. You don't want to drop and hang into that arch. You've really got to draw the hips down, tilt and lift the pubic bone up as you squeeze. That is more important than lifting up so high. All right? There should be no lower back tension because that tilt and tuck is so deep and secure. And then slowly roll the spine back down. All righty. Focus on that connection and that tilt more than your height. Let's go again. Slight squeeze of ball, tuck in navel, lift pubic bone, roll those hips up, up, up. Your height is your own here, guys. It's only going to be as high as you've still got pubic bone higher than two hip bones. The minute pubic bone starts dropping and you start popping your ribs up or your hips up, then we lose that scoop and tuck and tilt. Roll down slowly through the spine. Anchor to neutral. Two more. Tuck and tilt, belly in, hollow it out. Roll up through hips, lead with pubic bone, nice and high. Up, 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 up. Inhale. Exhale, slowly down. One more time, we inhale. Exhale, draw in the navel, tilt, tuck, roll it up. Squeeze and hold the chair. Go into that ball. Draw your knees towards one another. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Try and pop the ball. Find those inner thighs. And then we're going to do 10 more pulses of squeezing that ball even further for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, squeeze, keep lifting pubic bow. Three, two, one, hold the squeeze and roll down one vertebra at a time from the top, middle, then lower, then anchor tailbone and release pelvis to neutral. Good. Lift your knees up, give them a little hug, gentle rock and roll side to side. Okay. Super duper important that, guys. Grab your pillow now. If you don't have a pillow, you don't, it's okay. You don't need a pillow. If you want a little bit of extra assistance on the abdominals, then go into that pillow. Okay. Right. Ball is still in between the knees. Interlacing your fingers now. You hook those fingers with traction. Okay? Nice and tight. Supporting the base of the skull. Position your hands right at the base. Your elbows are going to hover up in peripheral view because when they hover in peripheral view, you've now adjusted where your shoulder blades are sitting, which is so important for going into abdominal exercises, maintaining stable shoulders in position. All right. Squeeze a little bit of ball, just gently. Take a breath in to prepare. Maintaining the space between your chin and chest and keeping your eyes pinned on one thing. You're going to exhale, drawing your chest up. Resting your face and neck. And then lower your head back down. Breathe in. Don't collapse your elbows. Keep them hovering. Exhale, breath. We close the gaps between the ribs as we lift the chest. Head is weighted in the hands and inhale down slowly. Exhale back up. Inhale down. Make sure you're not dropping the chin up and down onto the chest, that you stay stable through the neck, through the shoulders, as you hinge up through the chest and then lower it down. Very important. Otherwise, we can lose our abdominals and go into a full blown neck. And we really want to get the tummy strong and get out of the neck. Breathing in. Exhale, chest up. Inhale down. Exhale up. 
Inhale down. Keep tension on your hold. Exhale. Three more. Breathe in. Exhale. Think of narrowing your waistline and closing all gaps between your ribs. Inhale down. Exhale up. Inhale down. We're going to pull one more. Exhale up. Hold it here. We do a slight twist of the upper spine to right. Inhale, center. Exhale to left. Keeping your shoulder blades lifted. Steady neck. We use obliques to twist the spine. So we're not collapsing side to side. The shoulders are steady. We go for four more. I know it's burning. Come on. We go three. Twist. Don't collapse. Two. Exhale. And inhale. One more. Twist. Center it, stay up, and lower it down. Well done. You felt the burn, you are doing it right. That one never gets old. Always burns, burns, burns. Okay, from there I want you to grab the ball. Just keeping it at your side. I want you to feel like your hips are staying nice and level and neutral. So if we had an imaginary teacup filled with hot boiling water, on your, on your pelvic floor here. I want you to feel that you can float your leg up into tabletop, which is bent 90 degree, without the water in the imaginary teacup moving. Okay, so you've got to keep that neutral pelvis as you float your leg up into tabletop. From there, I want you to try your best for me to extend and stretch that leg. All right? Even if you have to lower it a bit to straighten it. And then see how high you can lift that straight leg up and hold it there, okay? If it bends a little bit, that's fine. But go for your stretch. Bring it in. And then release to tabletop. Extend. Stretch your straight leg and bring it in. Release. You can actually place your hand at your side if that works. Stretch. Level hips. Stay focused on that imaginary teacup that's on your belly. Stretch. Draw into your thigh. So from knee, thigh to hip, we connect it. Stretch with level hips. Doesn't help if you drop and collapse. You've got to stay mindful so that these tiny little nitty gritty muscles that you don't even know exist in there are actually working. Doing something. Good. Two more. One more, stretch that leg, hold it nice and long. Straighten the other leg and keep it lifted. Now we're going to tiny circles. Small, 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 as small as your ball to keep your hips steady. If those hips are so steady, then you can try and increase the range into a bigger circle. Length through your leg, the longest leg you've got. Three, two, one more, hold it, reverse direction. So you're moving through the hip, but it's serious abdominal and core work. Okay, keeping those hips level, not rocking around. Even if it's a tiny circle, but it's your longest leg. Three, two, one. Bend the knee, slide the straight leg back. And keeping that teacup's water dead steady, gently place the leg back down. Keeping the water in the imaginary teacup steady, we float the other leg up. Exhale, we extend. Inhale, we bend. We're being mindful of the neutral level pelvis while drawing into that thigh. And then you're going to a bit of flexion through the foot, stretching to the Achilles and release. Knee, thigh, foot, flex and stretch. Bring it back. Level head, slow movement, take it slow. Slow, steady, and control is so much better than rushing through it and completely losing it. Some of these exercises may seem super easy. But they are so good. They are golden. Don't underestimate them. One more, and we're going to hold that leg there, right? Straight as strong as leg. Maybe the side's easier, a little bit more challenging. Long leg. We circle, lifting it up as high as we can. 
So out of the small circle, if you've got that stability, then you can try lengthen it a little bit more. Breathe in for one circle, breathe out for another. Long leg, go for it, stretch it out, steady. Long leg, small circle. One more in the reverse. Circle it steady. Hands keeping you stable at your sides or to your hips, doesn't matter. But the pelvis is steady. We go for three more. Two more. Last one. Bend the knee. Place it down and lift the other leg up. Good, good, good. Ball in between your knees. Flat feet. Arms in T position. Palms facing up. Not up here into neck and shoulders, all right? A little bit lower. Now, keeping the knees together, we don't want to lag and leave the knee behind, okay? We want to keep those knees pinned to the ball and not roll the ball around in between the knees. So we're giving a little bit of ball squeeze. We're going to tilt the legs over to the right and the left foot will lift up. Now, we're only going to tilt as far as you can keep both your shoulder blades anchored onto the mat. If you see your thigh is lagging behind, it's incorrect. You need to reach through that thigh so that they remain level at your knees. So look at your knees and legs. Go as far as you can. Keep it the same. Keep it mirrored. And then use your obliques here to pull yourself back to center and imprint your spine to the mat. Over to the other side. We inhale, tilting. We keep the shoulder blades anchored on the mat. We make sure the knee is not lagging behind because that's coming from the hip. We keep it lifted equally. We mirror it back down to landing. Okay, keep going. Inhale, tilt. Reach through both arms and fingers. See if you can go a bit further, but only if your shoulder blade stays anchored. If the knees are equally length, the thighs are equally length. Exhale, pull back to center. Breathe in, we tilt. We twist, but we stay anchored on the opposite side. Exhale, really pull back and imprint your spine into mat. One more each side. Over we tilt. And this is now introducing controlled lower rotation through pelvic area. Over we tilt. Breathe again. Exhale, bring it back to center. Lovely, lovely. Okay, good, good, good. Tummy. We're going to lift the legs up into tabletop. Now you've still got that teacup on your belly, the hot water. So floating one leg up to bend 90 degree, floating the other leg up to bend 90 degree, keeping that water level in that teacup, okay? You're going to put the ball onto one thigh and knee with your hand on it, okay? And the other leg is going to stretch with the same arm. Press the ball into the knee, press the knee into the ball. And you've got to really imprint your lower back. So if this is challenging, you can lift that bottom leg a bit higher. And then release. Same side. And exhale. If it's too much, place that foot onto the floor rather than tabletop. If that's too easy, then I want you to rather keep it in tabletop. It's going to add a nice challenge. Let's go. Breathe and exhale. Press into the ball. Inhale, exhale, your lower back stays connected. Inhale, exhale, we'll do two more. Breathe and stretch, exhale, one more, you can do it. Inhale, hold it, exhale. Changing sides, inhale, stretch, exhale, return. The plan, this exercise is the plan, a classic Pilates exercise, modification. Foot to the knee. You can still press thigh up into ball and hand into ball in this position. It's still going to be a lot of work. Sometimes it can be lower back, knee to knees, or the core is just not quite right there, and we lose the fundamentals by going into tabletop. And that's why sometimes it's better to just go down to that modification. No problem at all. Okay, know your body and know what you need. As long as you're still challenging within reasonable ranges, okay? We go for two more. 
One more, breathe in and release. Okay, more in between the knees again. Same principles apply. If the tabletop's a bit heavy on the core and the low back right now, keep your feet on the mat. Those of you looking for a little bit more challenge, keeping the teacup nice and steady, you are like hold your tabletop legs, okay? Tabletop on its own is a core exercise. Sometimes just having your toes tipping on a wall or a cupboard can also be a nice way to slowly start getting you into tabletop, getting you stronger in tabletop with a little bit of assistance. Inhale, arms are going to be up nice and high. Breathe in. Exhale, lift your head, chest, and your arms. Here's your giant cage. Don't move the neck. Keep your eye line focused above your knees and place it down. Eye line, same place. Exhale, chest. Squeeze that wall, whether you're in tabletop or whether your feet are on the mat. Exhale, squeeze. And inhale, three more. I need strong ones. Exhale. And inhale. Two more. Give me your best. And inhale. One more. Come on. From here, grip hold of your legs. Stretch and squeeze and bring it in. We stretch and squeeze and bring it in. Shoulder blades lifting off the mat. Two more. Come on. One more, stretch, bring it in, and lower it down. Well done. Ball between your feet, your heels. I want you to create a bit of a V position of your feet, emphasizing your heels pressing into your ball or your cushion or your roll right now, okay? If you need a bit of assistance, use your hands to support you here. Okay? If it's a bit much, you can just stretch and bend. Those of you that don't need the assistance, place your hands at your sides. And you're going to extend your legs at 45 degrees, keeping the low back imprinted. Don't arch up. If you're arching, no, 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 no. Rather support and stretch to where you can maintain a flat anchored Imprinted spine into the mat. Okay, let's go. Breathing into prepare. Exhale, stretch those legs, squeeze the ball, and return. Squeeze and stretch, and return. So, easier version, you can support and hold, and if that's still a bit heavy, just go onto one leg. Alrighty, let's go. Exhale, squeeze. Bring it in. Lower back stays connected. Very important here. Four more. Can you squeeze and stay steady? Bring those inner thighs into the exercise. Two more. You flex those feet like a frog. Hold and squeeze your ball and release it. Good. Drop those feet down and give yourself a breather. Okay. From there, you're going to lift your knees up and hug your chest. Hug your knees to your chest. <laughs> Take a breath and then lift your chest up into this position. Make sure it's not just neck lifting the head, but abdominals lifting the chest. Release one leg past your ball, under your thigh, and change. Switch and change. This is the single leg stretch. If it's too much, you can drop one leg and pass in tabletop position. Okay. Keep your chest lifted and let's go for 10. Inhale, exhale. Chest stays up. If the neck takes over, do it without. Just do the legs. Too much, you can do it from tabletop. All right, three, two, one, and finish. Hug your knees back into your wall. Okay, from there, place your ball or your roll under your knees. Now squeeze and hug it to your ball and see if you can actually lift your bum and tailbone up off of that mat a little bit. 
this one. I want you to really scoop in your lower abdominals as you lift that tailbone up. And then pick your chest up and see if you can give yourself a rock to your seated position. Once you're there, float your feet off the mat and maintain a balance. Now, just as we did those pelvic tilts and curls, that scoop, that gentle tuck, very important. It belongs to the same family of exercises. We need that little scoop and tuck through the lower spine by drawing in the pelvic floor, not the mid and upper spine. So dissociate where you are moving through your spine. And if it's difficult at first, it's fine. You can practice it and learn new ways to move your body, working it correctly, okay? So just a little tuck and tuck off the sit bones and on the sit bones. Scoop and tuck, not the mid back, okay? Shh. That's it. So that when you're rolling back, you lean with that tilt of the lower back into mid, upper, and back to balance. You don't want to have any thumping or flat back, kunk, kunk happening, okay? You need to curl in the pelvic floor, in the, in the core, so that you're rounding down with fluidity and up. It's quite fun when you can round into it, your pelvic floor supporting the spine, okay? It shouldn't be a clamp and flat. So, find your balance, tuck in, those shoulders, draw them down, scoop into the pelvic floor a little bit deeper, and inhale, round down, exhale up. We hold this ball here, so we're not kicking the legs, we're not opening up the ball, we keep it small, let's go. You shouldn't be making a sound through this movement. Five more. Control, control. Bring you round into lower and mid back or any section you know is a little bit tight into the back. Find that combo between not too much and not too little so that you can balance without the feet crash landing on the mat. One more, then hold the balance, guys. Inhale, exhale, roll like a ball. Famous Pilates exercise. Hold the balance, keep the feet lifted, squeeze, and release it. Good. Straighten those legs. If you've got some tightness in the hammies and the back, pop yourself up, maybe a little bit better to sit on a cushion. If you don't, not to worry, you can always modify slightly bending your legs a little bit if you're struggling with the range to keep your back upright. But if you can, with the straightest legs you've got, I want you to really flex your feet. Okay, sitting up tall, imaginary wall behind you. There's a lot of imaginary things that have been put up. We've got to use that imagery to help us through the movement. It just helps you get it more because there is science behind this. These are important, important movements. So, nice tall spine against an imaginary wall. Open up your collarbones, length, length, length. Lift, lift, lift. No wrinkles in the neck. Crown lifts up nice and tall. Open your arms up, try and stretch your legs if you can without leaning forward. Sit back onto your sit bones. Inhale. Exhale, we're going to rotate the spine, you're reaching the arms out so you don't start moving the arms, okay? It's got nothing to do with that shoulder movement, it's the spine twisting. Little pulse, exhale, reach further, inhale, center, floor tall. Exhale, inhale, center. So this is helping us keep range, flexibility and mobility through the spine. We've got our cartilage around the joint area of the spine, and as we get older or we stop moving as much, things start to calcify and harden, and this is a beautiful way just to keep that rotation through the spine. Now take a moment, check in with your lower body. You shouldn't be pulling the brakes back onto each leg, because that's coming hips, which means now the lower back's moving in a twist, which you do not want to do. That's our real range of twist. Keep legs stretched and long, equal length, go tall. 
how much rotation can you create through your torso without one leg pulling back, okay? Keep them printed together. Twist, twist, center, and exhale, exhale, center. Work from that range. That's the real range. One more. And center. Open your legs as wide as your mat. Again, bend if you need it to help you keep your spine upright. Oh, I straighten those legs. Now, your spine is against an imaginary wall. Breathe in. Nod your chin, peeling just the top part of your head off that imaginary wall. Then your upper spine off the wall, but the rest is still stuck. Then the mid spine, but the lower back still stuck. Then the lower back and stretch forward. Press your ball down, lift your chest into a flatter back, imagining a marble roll down your spine. You're struggling to move through your back, bend the knees more. You're going to get more range when you loosen the hammy lock. Okay, and then tuck in the pelvic floor, we stick the lower back to the imaginary wall, mid back to the imaginary wall, upper back to the imaginary wall. It's a little bit complicated to grasp this, but when you do, you're creating such a nice stretch to the spine. That's why this exercise is called spine stretch. Inhale, nod your chin, hollow your chin. So sequentially peeling it off that imaginary wall. And then really reaching forward and then lift your chest so you flatten out the back through your hips. And then tuck in your navel, restack the spine. Let's do two more of those. Breathe in. Lot. Reach, stretch. Lift the chest. Inhale. Tuck and release it. Up, 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 up. One more. Breathe in. Flex your feet, nod your chin. Reach forward, go for it, stretch, lift the chest up, retracting your arms into your sockets, flat back, and navel in, pull back, restack your spine. Good, good, good. Try and straighten those legs as best you can. Opposite hand to opposite leg. We're going to reach, bring it back, opposite hand, reach, reach, and back. Flex your feet, we go, reach. Reach up and exhale, exhale, inhale, lift. Stay anchored in bones, your sit bones through the movement. tends to take a back seat. The side work is so important. Overall, it makes your forward and backwards movement strong and it also brings about balance in the body because if you notice that it's really different what you're experiencing on one side compared to the other side. So, let's try our best. Place your ball in between your ankles. Use the line of your mat to see that you can place yourself into a straight line position on your mat. Head down, pillow optional, okay? You don't have to have your pillow here. If you want, you can. Palm is facing up. I want you to notice your feet here. Try and flex them, really lift the pinky toes up in this position. You are directly on that hip bone. This is why you want to be have a nice sticking up mat. You can place a towel under there if you're feeling the pressure. And find your balance on your side. If this is really challenging, which it can be, you know, this is a fundamental exercise and beginner exercise. It's the first and foremost fundamental side strengthening exercise. Head to your side hand. Don't lift up that shoulder. Draw it down and connect, okay? That's going to help you. You're saving grace hand. Flex your feet. Draw your legs two centimeters longer. Stretching the front of the hips. And then lift those legs up to hover. You're on your hip and rope. Down to lift the mat, exhale, we lift again. I don't want you to worry about how high you lift your legs. 
I want you to see that you can keep your legs straight. You can keep your feet flexing. You can stay balancing square on your hip as you lift your legs up. If you want a little bit more challenge, try and lose the hand. But not if you start losing the fundamentals of the exercise. Rather give yourself support or maybe lessen the load of the finger supporting. Keeping shoulders out of the earlobes. Go for three more. Two. One more. Hold it there. Squeeze into your ball. And release it. Lovely. Bring the ball up. Place the top knee on the ball. Grow the bottom leg long. Lift it up and stretch the leg. Good. Now little pulses, tiny pulses, trying to lift the thigh higher up off of the floor. Tiny pulses, stay balanced, don't bend that knee. Stretch the leg because it's going to work so much more. Five, four, three, two, hold it up on one. Tiny circles, five. Small circles, don't rock those hips. Two, one. Keep lifting the leg in reverse direction. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift it a bit higher, hold it there, and then release it down. Good. Good, good, good. Lower this arm in front of you, down in, in line with your shoulder. Both arms together, you're laying on your side, not lagging back here. Knees got to stay pinned on that ball. Don't roll it around, okay? Inhale, you're going to lift your arm up. You're going to rotate it out, moving your ball. Reach, open up your chest. Look to that hand. Knees start moving. Exhale, bring yourself back as steady and stable as you can. It's challenging to keep this knee steady on the ball, but it's important because your hips don't want to rock back. But you can get that spine twist and stretch. Hips stay forward, twist, and bring it back. Exhale. One more. Breathe in. Exhale. Reach and bring it back. Well done. Lift yourself up and let's go to the other side. All right, ball in between your ankles. Align yourself with your mat. Use your mat for that straight line. Palm is facing up. Feet are flexing, balancing on your hip. Notice the difference on your side, whether it's easier or more challenging. Hand in position, feet flexion through the feet. Stretch the legs two to five centimeters longer. Tuck the pelvis. Exhale, hover it up. Inhale down. Exhale, hover it up, lift and lower. We're going to squeeze to the left, stretch those legs gently down and up, 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 up. That's it. Lift those pinky toes. Don't worry about how high you're lifting. Worry about the hips not rolling back. Worry about Stretching the legs nice and long. Three more. One more. Squeeze. Hold it up. See if you can lose the hand or a few fingers. Otherwise, just hold those legs up. And release it down. Lovely. Roll that ball up. Place your knee on top of the ball. Grow that bottom leg longer, stretch, and straight legs that are lift up nice and high. The highest leg you can lift. From the ear, pulse up higher. Good. If you want to drop that ball a bit lower, it feels a bit better, you can. Squeeze and lift it up. Five, four, three, higher, stretch, and circle. Five, four, stay steady. Three. Two, one, reverse change. Keep the height through the circle. Three, two, one more. Circle, high leg, up, 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 up. And release it down. Good. 
from there. Arm forward, hands together on your side. Breathe in. Don't roll the hips back. Exhale, you're going to twist, rotate, getting that arm to reach open up your chest or remain still. Breathe in from here. Exhale, draw back. And again, breathe in, we lift, open, we twist, we release, we stretch, look to the hand, and exhale, bring it back. One more time, let's go, breathing in, breathing out, twist, keep the hips forward as you open up the upper torso. Reach, exhale, breath brings it back. Well done. That is so good for you guys. Do that in bed with a little uh, pillow on your leg in the morning or at night before you sleep. Get some movement. Okay, from the hips, roll onto the tummy. Try to move the pillow out the way. For this exercise, I want you to really think about your pelvic connection because it's so important right from the beginning to know how to work through the exercises where you're laying prone position on your tummy correctly. Because so often we go into feeling low back ache, low back strain, and 90% and, and, and 90, 90 of, of, of us already have a little lower back leg. So we don't want to go and aggravate lower back issues any further, pain or strain, okay? So when you're in this position, you've got to tuck in your navel. You've got to imagine laying on a little ice block, forming in your core and tilting your pubic bone into the mat. This will create length in your lower spine rather than an arch jam and cramp. So pulling in, tuck and tilt, I want you to really hold that scoop, okay? Very important. And then in this position, in this position, you're going to just have your hands here at your side, really pulling your belly. See if you can just hover your nose up, pull your shoulders back away from the mat, and feel your upper back now activating. You don't have to lift up high at all, but you want to make sure you're disassociating and not using your lower back muscles to lift your hovering chest. If you feel you're doing that correctly, then try and lift the heart a little bit more. But only if you can deeply maintain the pelvic connection of drawing up and in on that imaginary ice cube. That ice cube is freezing cold, so really pull your belly in. And then exhale down. Your hands here at your side are not pushing in to lift you up because then it becomes an arm exercise. These are light feather hands with the shoulders pulled back with a stretching neck so that you feel these upper back muscles working. Exhale down. Inhale, lightly lift. Exhale, lower. Your crown is reaching forward. You're stretching the back of the neck. There's no wrinkles in the neck. Inhale, breath lifts you up. And exhale, breath lowers you down. Five more. Inhale, extend with length and exhale down. So we're reversing the curvature of the spine hanging forward in our sitting at our desk and laptop position. So much minutes and hours of the day, the spine is rounded in flexion. And this exercise aims at reversing out that flexion and using these muscles that are needed to be strong, to strengthen us, to hold our spine upright so that we don't get pressure, aches and pains in the bone of the spine. Notice that your neck is stable here as you lift and lower. One more. I'm sure that is more than five, but how who cares? We need to do lots of these. Hold it up there. If your lower back feels anything, just hover it down slightly. If your lower back spine, challenge yourself to lift a bit higher. Float these arms up. Roll those shoulders back more. Reach the arms behind you. Exhale down. Lift up, breathe in. You're still laying on an ice cold ice block. 
So tuck in your belly and don't worry about looking so high. You're not going there. That's grabbing the next spine. Okay, it's just a hover. Reach. Two more. Up. We reach. One more. We reach up. Exhale down. Bringing your hands back to the mat. Tucking in your belly as you squeeze your bum. Press your hands into the floor and lift up as high as you feel a good stretch. No lower back pain. If you can really lift up higher, go for the full extension. Think of lifting your chest and breastbone up. Big inhale. Exhale, release it slowly down. Tuck your toes, push back into a rest position, rounding your spine. And then roll up onto hands and knees. In this four point position, stack your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees. So again, that alignment, that alignment, that alignment. Open up your fingertips, connect them all. Same thing when you're standing in the feet and you're equally pressing your weight. The same idea through your hands. You're equally pressing your weight through your fingers, through your hands. You're not hanging into the spine. You're not hunching and rounding. You're in the middle where you're in a flat, neutral spine. So if we place that imaginary teacup of hot, boiling water on our spine right now, the water would not be moving. The head's not hanging. The chin's not lifting. We align our neck with the rest of the spine because it's an extension of the spine. Now tucking your navel really cool and lifting to your lower back. Then roll up into your mid back and then into your upper spine as you drop your head. See the round spine lifting to the ceiling. Bridge. Now reverse the curve, start flicking the tailbone back up, rolling through lower spine. Mid spine, upper spine, lifting eye line, shoulders down. Starting from the tailbone, tuck in the navel, scoop, really lifting to the lower back. Take it slow, then the mid back, then upper back, drop the head, spread the shoulder blades apart. And then starting from the tailbone, reverse it back up into extension, lower. Middle, upper, lift the chest, open those collarbones, and then release it into a neutral spine. Now, you're going to cross those angles, you're going to take your hands a step forward, and you're going to bring your shoulders forward on top of your wrists. Now, so often we think, ah, the brain says, no, this is difficult, let's not use our core, let's keep the bum hanging back. No, I want you to tuck in your pelvis and bring your hips forward. Now, this is a flat line I'm looking for, from your crown to your tailbone. You don't want to hang an arch, you don't want to round and leave behind bum and spine, you want a nice, long, flat line. You can lift your feet up or keep them down, up to you. Tuck in your belly, tilting pubic bone forward, squeeze your bum, let's go into five push-ups. Take it slow because I want your hips to drop down and your hips to lift up with your spine. You don't want to go hips, then spine, or take the chest down but leave the hips up. Slowly, we lower the hips and the chest is one spine and up. Three more. Very important to do this correctly. Elbows alongside the body or wide, doesn't matter. It will be triceps or biceps. I'm more worried about you dropping your hips and not leaving them behind today. One more. Let's go. Press, lift. Ah, oh, nice. Push back into this position. Take a deep breath and roll back up. Tucking your toes. Push up into your upside down B position and then just bend and stretch one leg at a time as you push away from your hands. Trying to lift your tailbone up, releasing your neck. Draw that heel down, find that stretch. Good, and then walking your hands slowly back towards your feet, tucking in your navel 
and rolling your spine all the way back up to the top. We'll do one roll down to finish it off, everybody. Standing tall, breathing, roll your shoulders back, nod your chin, soften your knees, hang into your arms, leaving the hips behind, unpack the pressure in the upper spine, release the neck, weighting equally through your feet, take a deep breath in, tucking your navel and roll up slowly, three stack, lengthen tailbone down, standing up. Nice and tall. Well, well done, well done, everybody, for completing your first beginner class of the month. Woohoo! I hope you join me next week again. We'll probably be doing the chair next week, so adding some props, and then we'll use stability ball, one of these big black ones, and then band will be the last week of the month. Okay. So. Thanks, Sabrina. And see you soon. Drink water. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Sabrina. Lots of hugs. Keep warm. Oh, hugs, Andy. Claire, I'm so glad you joined. King, I'm glad you loved it.